What if I shared with you the five emotional virtues you can consistently step into that will simultaneously attract committed men while repelling inconsistent, unmotivated, unavailable time wasters? Well, stick around because that's exactly what I'm about to do in this video today. If you're watching this video, I don't have to remind you that it's rough out there in the world of men and dating. You know it. You might be connecting with guys who seem really excited to get to know you and then start breadcrumbing you, offering you the bare minimum not to lose you. Maybe you think things are progressing, all of a sudden the guy ghosts you and you're left wondering if there's something wrong with you, if he did something wrong or if something really bad happened to him. Maybe you get tons of text messages from men who never intend to ask you out, but you still waste time with them. Maybe if you're doing online dating, you get that feeling of loneliness and confusion and overwhelm, almost as if you were the hidden appetizer in the giant menu of Cheesecake Factory that no one can find. My goal for you today is to get you closer to what you want through not just sharing these virtues, but having you do an honest self-assessment that lets you know, am I really stepping into these virtues? If you're not, start doing it so you can get what you want faster. Many women are not stepping into these virtues because they fall for the vanilla ice cream myth. Imagine you were an ice cream and maybe you're Rocky Road, maybe you're mint chocolate chip, maybe you're exotic mango. But if you think that men want vanilla and you're trying to turn yourself into something that's not who you are, to lessen the intensity of who you are, to dumb yourself down in some way, then you'll connect with guys, but they'll be the wrong guys for you and they won't allow you to express your true colors. Hello, my name is Bern, and if you'd like to attract your ideal life partner without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, tricks, or stupid techniques, make sure to hit the subscribe button right now so you can see more videos like this one that will help you to attract the guy you want by being the best version of yourself. First virtue that's gonna help you attract the kind of man you want much quickly than your current trajectory is intelligence balanced with emotional depth. Let me unpack what I mean by this. The higher your IQ, the less likely you are to get married as a woman. How is that for a discouraging message? Now here's a caveat. If you're highly intelligent and you combine your intelligence with emotional depth, which means the capacity to have empathy, the capacity to have expressiveness, the capacity to connect to your sensuality, the capacity to express your radiance and light, intelligence plus heart coherence is an incredibly attractive woman to a man. Intelligence without the heart connection is not gonna create the pursuit that you're looking for. Men who are insecure will not be a fit for you if you're smart. A guy is looking to manipulate you, if a guy is looking to have his way with you, then smart woman is the worst thing you can have. However, a guy who's intelligent, a guy who's purpose-driven, a guy who's centered, a guy who's sure of himself, is gonna find an intelligent woman very attractive and exponentially more attractive the more you're able to connect with your emotions and express not just what's in here, but express what's in here through the filter of your heart. The easiest way to do this, if you're someone who's highly intelligent but have a trouble sometimes connecting to your heart, is develop daily rituals that put you into contact with your emotions. That could be dancing, singing, writing poetry, listening to music, conversing with other girlfriends in a way that allows your creativity to spark. Anything that puts you in a consistent space of creativity and feeling and gratitude will enable you to have your heart waves and your head waves connect and be far more attractive to the right kind of guy that you're looking for. If you're smart, you could be intimidating to a man, but the way you reduce that edge is through heart-centered connection. If you're looking for a system to get you there, my Radiance on the Man program and one of the links in the description will help you get there really fast. Number two is clarity of expression. Clarity of expression means that you have the capacity to be direct and specific in terms of what your needs are when you're communicating with a man. The two different challenges that I found when women don't get what they want is either suppressing their needs out of a fear of feeling needy or wanting too much, not deserving what they want, or on the other side of things is expressing what they want without the nuance and respect <laughs> in a way that's full of drama and will turn men away. So it's something so simple but so scary sometimes to clearly express what your needs are, what you're looking for in a relationship, what you're looking for in a marriage, what your physical and emotional needs are. But when you're able to express them that way, the right guy is gonna find this to be music to his ears. Why? Because now he has the keys to the kingdom 
and because he wants to make things better for you, he'll do the right things and get you there. If a guy is just looking to suck your energy, if a guy is not looking for a commitment, if he just wants to connect with you, get in your pants, then you expressing what you want will be a self-disqualifying tool that will help you to move on more quickly. So the way to do this without feeling like you're imposing on him or like you're asking for too much is you're not talking about him, you're talking about yourself. When you say, here's what I'm looking for in a relationship, you're not saying, dude, I want this with you. You're saying, here's what I'm looking for. He can't step up or step down. Here's the type of connection that I want. I'm looking to have a family. I'm looking to get married. When you share what you want, you're basically stating to the world, I will get this with or without you. If you want to come join me, if you want to explore this with me, I'm open. And if you don't, that's cool too. I'm not pushing anything on you. I just want to be clear about what I want. Third need is conscious ambition. I see a lot of women who are ambitious and feel like they intimidate men and feel like they have to suppress their goals, whether it's career or financial, because they don't want to scare men away. And my whole thing is you shouldn't do that because you might attract the type of guy who, once he finds out the truth about you, will not want you anymore. So what you want to do is you want to do the conscious ambition versus just ambition. I'm going to give you two qualifiers that let you know how conscious it is. The first one is the ambition you're going for is not just for you. You're not just working really hard and lots of hours for a big bank account. If that's how you're doing it, you're doing it like the toxic men out there are. If what you're doing and the way you're going about it is benefiting other human beings, is making life in some small way better for somebody else, then you're contributing to the solution versus the problem. The second part is you don't do ambition at the expense of life. You don't do ambition at the expense of what's really important to you. You don't do ambition at the expense of people. If you're one of those humans who thinks you can do 70, 80 hours a week of work and have a fulfilling, meaningful, intimate relationship, you are living in a fantasy and deluding yourself. It's possible for short amounts of time, but not sustainably. So what you want to do is you want to taper your ambition, just like I would recommend to a man, with the consciousness of people are more important than things. Time spent together is as important as the career we're building together. If you don't invest conscious time, not just your extra hours, like 30 minutes when you're dead tired at the end of the day, if you don't consciously create and carve out time, prime time to connect to your partner, then you're never going to create the fulfillment that you're seeking in a relationship. Now, before I go into four steps four and five, I have an invitation. If you're watching this video as a single woman, you probably don't understand what actually has you staying single. You might know some of the symptoms, but the true root cause, you may be unaware of. And what I've done is I've taken 12 years of helping women find love in different continents with every kind of love challenge you can imagine and putting them down in a very simple quiz you can take in about 60 seconds and find out the number one reason you're still single. So if you want to participate, all you have to do is go to the first link in the description right now. You'll see a page that looks like this. Answer a few simple questions. And in the next 60 seconds or so, you'll have the answer as to why you're still single. But beyond that, a free report that's going to show you, based on your specific challenge, what's the number one thing you can do right now, I mean today, to reverse course and attract the guy you want much faster. Step number four is interdependence. We live in a culture that is so individualistic that we tend to see, erroneously, the needing to meet each other's needs as codependent. And it couldn't be further from the truth. If you can meet all your needs on your own, you would not be in a relationship. You'd not be seeking a relationship. So interdependence means that you understand that you will need to meet many of your needs in the partnership. So I'll give you three categories of things to think about. First one is emotional needs. And that includes communication. Second one is physical needs. And third one is spiritual needs. There's nothing wrong in you for wanting to meet your needs through another human being. I'm not saying that you should only meet them through another human being. I'm saying you'll meet them and expand them in ways that you would never be able to do on your own. Don't delude yourself that you can. I mean, like we're not meant to be single, separate individuals. That's not how our DNA is created. That's not how society through centuries has been created. The next part is to understand that there's going to be different stages of those needs. For example, your physical needs will be different when you're first connecting to the guy, to when you've been dating him for a little longer, to when you've been exclusive with them, to when maybe you're married, living in the same space. But for you to understand and sit down in a room and write down, here's what my physical needs are at the beginning, once we're exclusive, and then later on, here's what my spiritual needs are. And I encourage you 
as you think about what your interdependent needs are for spirituality, don't just go and say, I'm looking for a Christian, or I'm looking for a Muslim, or I'm looking for a Jewish guy. What I recommend is that you sit down and figure out what are the values you're seeking in that human being? What are the things he will do and say beyond what church he goes to that will allow you to have a lifelong fulfilling life with them? I've seen so many women who get the checkbox of what they want and they think that it's safe, but it's not. And again, I'm not saying to look for somebody outside your religion. If you're religious, I'm saying don't limit yourself they're not going deeper into the values because you might be able to connect with someone who doesn't check the box of the religion, but has a much more connected and value-driven life that's compatible with yours. The last one is the ability to set boundaries with class. You, you wanna talk about a virtue that will quickly differentiate guys who are time wasters with men who are serious and intending in creating a lifelong partnership with you is set a boundary with class. You go from saying you're wrong to that doesn't work for me. You go from saying you shouldn't have done that to here's what you can do to make it better. You go from saying how dare you to here's what your actions feel like in my nervous system. So again, you don't blame the guy, you don't judge the guy, you simply say here's what I need going forward and here's where I draw the line. Here's what I can do, here's what I can't do, or here's where we can meet in the middle. If you're able to set boundaries early and often, you will find very quickly the types of men who are looking for something long-term versus just temporary and loosey-goosey. Friends with benefits. A guy who wants to understand you, a guy who wants to meet your needs, will navigate boundaries with you in a way that's fulfilling. A guy who just wants it all for himself, a guy who's looking only to meet his own needs, a narcissistic dude who wants to leave off your excitement, who wants to suck the energy out of you, is not gonna be able to respect your boundaries. So set them early, set them often, and set them with courage and class. Drop me a comment in this video letting me know what the, what's the biggest thing you're struggling with so I can continue creating content that meets your needs.